Hey everybody, it's Karen with Food and Family and I have a very special guest with me today. Y'all heard me talk about Will, my dear friend, and he's the one I tell you about that I go on the radio with. So, Will, say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. Now, Will has a restaurant in Pelham called Chub Fathers. Fathers. And so if you're ever in the area, go by and visit him. He has some wonderful, wonderful food. So let's tell them what we're making today. Today we are going to do a salt baked red snapper. I've had snapper, but I've never had it salt baked. You know, it's, it's one of those things, <sighs> such an old technique. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people have probably heard mm -hmm. about a salt bake. Then they see it happen and it, it, it's, it seems a little intimidating. It mm -hmm. seems a little much. Mm -hmm. Nothing can be farther from the truth. Super simple. You don't need a whole lot of ingredients. And this is a technique that, it, you know, like all great cooking techniques, mm -hmm. everybody likes to argue about who started it and where it started. Mm -hmm. um, there's recipes going all the way back uh, to the 4th century really? uh, BCE. Um, most folks think that Sic Sicily... Mm -hmm. is the origin um you know the alabama foodist who's on breaking bread with us big spain mm -hmm. fan and you know she tells us the folks in spain they're proud of their culture and their heritage and they created and Absolutely. invented everything um so there's also early recipes of um spanish fishermen um just mounting up salt and and, and, and baking fish on a slab mm -hmm. um the only earlier recipe than f uh the fourth century uh, it goes back to China. Um, I forget which dynasty. And uh, there's a recipe for uh, cooking fowl mm -hmm. uh, in a salt bake. So, but didn't the salt also help preserve meats and such it is. before they had the refrigeration? And absolutely, it was like very common. To, uh, you know, when when folks went out on a sea voyage mm -hmm. to discover strange new worlds, that uh, it was just a bunch of stuff packed in salt as a uh, preservative. I think some people are also scared off because they see a big mound of salt and something being cooked in a big mound of salt and mm -hmm. their, 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 their initial reaction is, oh my gosh, that's going to be so mm -hmm. salty. Mm -hmm. um, so, that would be my first thought. Sure. Well, you know, it, it's important to, um, sometimes like if you were going to do a chicken, if you were going to bake chicken, you, you, there are people who would pull the skin off. There were people who would catch the fish and remove the scales. Mm -hmm. If you have the opportunity to catch the fish that you're going to salt bake, which we actually did, we caught these uh, Monday uh, down in the Gulf of Mexico, mm -hmm. um, left the scales on it. It's just going to give an extra layer of protection. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, the scales will make the skin peel off in one whole piece. Oh, okay. Hopefully. Mm hmm a lot easier as well okay all right so i'm learning a lot today about how to cook fish okay so let's show i'm gonna get on the other side of you and you show us how you're gonna put this together all right well for a two and a half pound fish which is a good average size mm -hmm. fish i would say you need right at about three pounds of a uh, coarse salt um i've used sea salt and it's sea, sea salty for isn't, sure. Isn't that a beautiful fish? So uh, into this bowl here, we're just going to go with three pounds of kosher salt. Doesn't really matter what the brand is or mm -hmm. whatever you can use. If you want to use fancy pink Himalayan sea salt, you can. Um, you really just want to stay away from the uh, super fine grinds. Yeah. They, they won't stick together. They won't. Um, they won't hold the heat as well. So you could use like a coarse sea salt Absolutely. if you had it available, or okay. ice cream rock salt is, is, really? is cheap. You could use yeah. you could use the rock salt, and okay. that would just be fine. Oh, it and, is cheap. Yes. Yeah. So you know we're gonna go here and to this. We're gonna add about a half a cup of water, and then three egg whites. Whites. Just the whites. And that's just going to kind of help in the, uh, so basically what you're doing, oh, look at me. Easy, easy, easy fix. Yes. There you go. Um, you're creating an oven basically for your mm -hmm. fish 
or whatever you're cooking in it to cook it. That's you know, but that would do great in an outdoor oven if you had one. Absolutely. Like the little beehive oven. Mm-hmm. You can even, like I said, you could just set this on a slab outside and uh, throw a few coals on top of it, and that's how they did it back in the day before. Oh. There was. So you could ovens. put it on the grill. So mm -hmm. the what we're looking for with this salt by the time now you can throw some herbs and whatnot mm -hmm. in here but for today's purposes i just wanted to keep it as simple keep it simple as possible yeah. so we're just going to start mixing this around and ideally you want like that perfect sandcastle sand yeah you know where it's it's a little bit it's a little bit moldable mm -hmm. um but it's still got some texture to it. It's gonna pack well. Yeah, so I mean, if you can, if you can pick this up after you feel like you've mixed it up well enough, and it'll make a little snowball mm -hmm. and kind of keep it its ready. form. It's good. All right. All right. So, so we're ready. Let's get this fish. Oh, thank you, fish. That is a beautiful fish. It is. The eyes are still crystal clear gutted them up good so but tell me on fish and this is what i've always been told you don't want it to smell fishy no. you want it to smell like the ocean absolutely like the water it came from absolutely so you know it's it's eyes being clear not yeah. super glossed over um it's a good touch you can always take a peek in here the outside skin and the gills and these little i don't even know what you call these exactly mm. All, all this is very sharp mm -hmm. on a red snapper as a defense mm -hmm. mechanism, but you can always get back behind the gills and look and make sure that they're nice and red and, yeah. and, and aren't, aren't slimy. Um, so we've obviously, we've gutted. It's been gutted. So he's been clean. Yep, he's been clean. So we are simply going to fill its cavity. Mm -hmm. So Simple. that's where we're putting the flavor into mm -hmm. the fish. As it cooks. So we're just going to... It doesn't have to be pretty because it's all going to the same place. On this size fish, three, four lemons maybe at the most. And we're just going to finish with a little bit of lemon. Yeah, and you just thin slice that lemon. Absolutely. Going to go next with a little bit of some red onion slice. So we're doing nothing here but adding flavor just to flavor. this fish. Get some sage. Mm. And to me, sage is one of those that can be a little bit strong, so I cut back on sage. Absolutely. But, you know, for this purpose, we're really, w w when we're finished, where all this is being stuffed into, into this cavity, um, we haven't cracked the ribs mm -hmm. all the way down because we want the fish to stay together. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to permeate through the fish nearly as much as you would want it to right. typically so you can go you, you can a use little, a little uh, a little more so we got the rose uh, we got thyme onion lemon we're gonna go with some rosemary as well some of uh, miss kern jones parsley Fresh out of picked. the garden we're just gonna stuff him down in there and then Garlic. garlic. I love to. garlic. Got to, got to. And I probably should have put some of that in first, but I didn't, and that's okay. So it really doesn't matter which way you put it together as long as you put it together. As long as you put it together, oh, man. You know, there's now that this is done. Let's see, I'm gonna make sure I get a good Yeah. I'll show I, what that looks like inside. Yeah, Beautiful. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm excited. All right, so Easiest thing to do after you've done that is just kind of sit this down and then mark, kind of mark where your fish is going to be. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of doing an outline. I'm just doing a little outline because the next step to this is to uh, make a bed on the sheet tray. We've got a beautiful half size metal sheet pan here. You can use just an aluminum pan. You like can a use disposable. You can use a regular old cookie sheet. Um, you know, we're fortunate enough that uh, 
my phone's ringing right in the middle of this video and uh that's okay i called myself silencing it <laughs> but my wife calls herself silencing me a bunch and <laughs> that also doesn't work they got the hint i was busy there you go all right so we're going down here from there we're just gonna and then you start covering them up start covering them up and right. I brought some extra salt in case I didn't gauge very well and we can make some more. I think this is going to be okay. I may have to make some more. I don't know. Okay, so let me let him pack this fish and then we're going to come back and show you what it looks like when he's done. Y'all stay with us. Okay, he has this beautiful fish packed in salt. So what do we do now? We're going to preheat our oven mm -hmm. to 400 degrees. Mm -hmm. And for a two and a half, three pound fish, mm -hmm. you're going in for 35, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you can use an internal probe thermometer after it comes out if you're super concerned about sure. it. You know, to yeah. be sure, you know, it hits 135, 140 degrees, you're fine. We're gonna we're, we're gonna trust the process. Okay. And, uh, I know it's going to be about 35, 40 minutes. Yeah, and, uh, fish didn't take that long. No, cook. not at all. And uh, you know. You may experience some, see some cracking as it's cooking. As it's drying out. As it's drying out. Drying. It's okay. Um, you know, but as you start getting closer to the time that the fish is finished, mm -hmm. it's going to coincide with the salt beginning to brown uh -huh. nicely all the way oh, across okay. the top. Okay, so that's kind of a, like a cake pulling apart from the sides of the pan. Absolutely, you know like, like a dry. pancake bubbling up. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, a lot of references. Here we go. All right, so let's put it in the Her oven. We have it heated to 400. 400. Middle rack. Yes, ma'am. You know, the thing is, after it's in the oven, it's just like meat on the grill. Mm -hmm. Don't fool with it. Just, leave it alone. Just leave it and, 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 and let it be. The more you open the oven to check it, you're losing that temperature. Don't poke the hornet's nest. Yes, or the bear. Yeah, or the bear. All right, so we're going to let this bake, and we'll be back with you when he takes it out of the oven, okay? Seems Our beaker good. just went off. Fancy. I think we're ready. Yes. My, my hands have disappeared just like the fish in the salt. <laughs> Let's go recover them. Let's try. If y'all could smell it in here right now. Ooh, I'll get the oven door for you. Oh, just like you said, it's starting to turn brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looky there. Beautiful. Oh, that is gorgeous. so good. So just like anything else, we just pulled it out of the oven. We're going to let it rest for a couple minutes. Yeah. And then we're going to crack this baby open. and. Uh, okay. So like a good steak, we let those juices mm -hmm. settle. Let it all settle back in. and. Uh, okay. We'll be ready to crack the salt open and taste this fish. All right. Okay, it's been like five or six minutes, and we're ready to open this up. I Judgment day it. is upon us. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Uh, I'm ready. You, you just need something good and heavy. Miss Karen has wonderful wooden wooden spoons. You can see that uh, that uh, th these were good child rearing wooden spoons <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so uh. Without further okay, ado, so simple as that. Just start cracking. Start, start cracking, and he'll start. He'll shill. I'm not sure which. Okay, and it's just sheeting off. So you're not eating all this salt. It's just to bake it. Absolutely. Like I said, we've done nothing really but create. Look at another the color of that fish oven. in there. And I tell you, I'm gonna. I'm going to let you and uh, our special guests here in just a moment. They just happened to walk in in time to yes. eat. They smelled it. They smelled it, smelled they it, smelled it. followed their noses. The cheek meat from a red snapper, mm -hmm. hands down the best bite mm -hmm. on the fish. You know, everybody makes a big, you know, the Bright Star does, does great with their mm -hmm. snapper jowls and whatnot. Yeah, that, that, I like that, their snapper throats. Yeah, they're uh, 
that cheek meat is mm -hmm. so let me ask you um if you don't have access to the red snapper or you don't want to pay for the red snapper could you use a different type of fish you can use any fish your heart desires if you wanted to put a catfish on here and do it that way mm -hmm. absolutely sea bass works really good um trout is excellent mm -hmm. this way I love trout. whatever honestly whatever you've got that's convenient and fits your budget and like i said this method works with small fowl mm -hmm. um i've seen people do elk roasts um in a salt bake okay. never had it that way yeah but it looks amazing but it's not like it's dedicated simply to doing no no this is just a this is just a common it's just a method of yep let's show them what that piece of fish looks like since it's been look at the isn't that beautiful yeah it did not lose its color not at all it kind of deepened the color to me yes so if we have done this properly we should and it's another reason why we left the scales on because it makes it a little easier to run so I took the fork, the meat fork, and just ran it down under here. It's just under the skin. It's just under the skin. And look, oh, how beautiful, looky there. And there's nothing but skin. We're not losing meat. Big, big benefit of leaving the scales on, aside from, like I said, a little extra protection from the salt, but it really, makes a difference with this so and this fish he's going to hold this up after he gets that off and show you it still has it's not dried out it's so moist it is and still moist just just for you because you know i'm an instant gratification dude everybody who cooks is we're just going to take a little oh and I'm losing stuff. Won't hurt. No, we're just gonna hit it. We're just, just gonna oh, just a, little a, a little lemon on fish. A little kiss. There you go, my love. There you go. That is amazing. Salty at all? No, it is not salty. I get it's soft. It's tender. That little kick of um, just a little hint of lemon. No salt. Mm -mm. That's delicious. And and it's you know look and, and look you you just look up. Look at that. Just you've got to see this. He's gonna hold this up and let you see how moist this fish is. Oh and y'all see it's still hot and steaming. Looky there. That is perfectly done so uh let's play it up a couple of these let's do that because i know uh, our guests sir wanted to come and, uh, in and see what happens try it with us just i really want to pick it up and I can i man up for a second look at that just all came right out and off now look at there the aforementioned Miss Karen, get you that piece right that there. That is, um, that's going to be the best. But it's like the oyster on the chicken, mm -hmm. right? The amount of flavor and tenderness inside of that bite is ridiculous. That is so good. I mean, it's crazy it how it's different tender. than the rest. I mean, yes. it's, you can tell you're eating snapper, but it tastes better than the rest of the snapper. It has a different flavor than... From the body, mm -hmm. it's it is. It's very I should open a restaurant. I think you should open a restaurant. <laughs> We're gonna serve snapper. <laughs> let's get this out of the way. Oh. All right, let's plate this up, and uh, we'll, we'll be, be right back with you. Yes, let's I'm do sorry, that. I didn't mean to take your job. You did. What do you say we try this? I say I'm ready. I'm ready too. I'm ready. We, we just happened by. Hey. 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 It's the uh, uh, four two. Yeah. It's the uh, the rest of the Breaking Bread crew. How fork will travel? <laughs> <laughs> the Alabama <laughs> food away from, uh, from and AJ. I did to you in. now? We All have right. A oh. I, I just wanted go. to make sure that that we we saw how much how little meat 
we wasted. We wasted none. Um, in this preparation. And like I said, don't be intimidated, man. Try something new. It uh, it works out good. Absolutely. So we've just got a AJ. There's 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 a U. That's a U. And uh, we've just we haven't done anything else to the fish. No additional no. seasoning. No. Some of it's uh, Karen's fresh parsley and a little uh, can little like bust a plate of lemon. Cheer before we eat. We can yes. do a plate. Cheers. <laughs> Let's do. All right. Ah, All right, there we go. All Thank right. you, Snapper, for doing that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now we are breaking bread. Okay, yes. so all together. Yeah. All right. Mmm. Okay. I'm playing. Is oh, that that's not? Awful, so I <laughs> <laughs> that was so. I'm a little too scared. Mmm. That is so yummy. Oh wow. It's so flaky. Mm -hmm. And it is not. And that's why we went, you know, when we were doing the preparation, Karen talked about a lot of times sage can be very overpowering. So you pull it back. Such a big fish and just being tucked down in that cavity. Don't be afraid to overdo it because yeah. it's the only seasoning and flavor that's going in mm -hmm. are those flavors yes uh, and i wish you guys could have smelled it while i was cooking it was amazing when it was amazing it's not salty but i do taste enough salt that it's seasoned it has right? the season I mean, but yeah, no it's but not, not no it almost it almost becomes more of a it's a part of the fish the salt that the, the salt that's left over after you brine something, mm -hmm. yeah. it's yeah. that type. It's that type of salt flavor. Right. It's not mm -hmm. like mouthful of salt water. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't need to season it mm -mm. after. No right. No, this and is the type of fish I will want to. Uh, I will spend some extra money on. Yes, you know, absolutely. You go to a nice, nice restaurant. Yeah, this is the type of fish I would expect to get. And it's it's not fishy. Mm -mm. Yeah. So you know that to me, that's the benefit. I love fish, but I don't want a fishy fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is this is perfect. Well, you know, and I believe I want to taste my food. I don't want to taste the seasonings. Right. And all the it's great to have them there to accompany the fish or whatever you're cooking. Well, the seasoning is supposed to help enhance the the meat. Absolutely. Whatever you're trying to season, it's not supposed to be overbearing. To the point where that's all you taste. I'm tasting salt. I'm tasting right. sage. I'm not. I'm, I'm tasting my food exactly. with that little hint in the background. Exactly. Good job. Right. All right, we're gonna do this again, guys. Yes, okay. absolutely. absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank Us, you for all of you yes. for being with me today. I certainly I did appreciate my job, it. Yes. You did. You did perfect. Yes. Yes. Couldn't ask for any better. <laughs> 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 all right, we certainly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope to see you again soon. Please like, share, subscribe, and don't forget hit that little notification bell so you'll know when we put out our next video. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Peace.